my greetings to all of you. Let me reveal my heart. I am surcharged. I am energized. I am motivated. I am inspired. And I have an optimism which for sure will factify into a ground reality. Honorable Lieutenant Governor, Sri Manoj Sinha Ji, Chancellor, University of Jammu. I had been his great admirer, but today I become his follower. <laughs> Even before I became Governor of the State of West Bengal, I had virtual connect with him. And today I have seen the man exploiting his talent, intellect, sagacity for welfare of students. <laughs> he has in him qualities that help society grow like a plateau. The kind of seamless connect, the synergetic working between various vice chancellors and the council is enormous. It is an example, a model that can be replicated in the country to make Bharat when it attains centenary at peak. <laughs> Sri Rajiv Rai Bhatnagar, advisors normally are ornamental. He is an exception. Right from the time I landed, I could make out from his body language. He has put his heart and soul into what he does. My congratulations to him. I would appeal to Sri Alok Kumarji that the accolades which he has got from the Vice Chancellor, he would keep it up and take it on incremental trajectory. <laughs> Professor Umesh Rai, I think perhaps is cut out to be Vice Chancellor. <laughs> A man of humility, he has persuasion in every word with no aggression. I am meeting for the first time a man whom I have admired for long without meeting, Professor Dinesh Singh. Since he will be little surprised and I have to vindicate my credibility, I gathered more input about him because I happen to be Chancellor of Delhi University. So I came to know about all the previous Vice Chancellors. We are lucky to have a good Vice Chancellor, Professor Yogesh, but he takes Professor Dinesh Singh as his role model. The observations imparted by the Honorable Lieutenant Governor about him being an educationist at a premium level in the country are very well-meaning and fact-oriented. I am little envious of him that he is working in an area but not working for the entire country. Such a talent, such a reservoir needs to be tapped at national level. Former Vice Chancellors, present Vice Chancellors, members of the faculty, academic council, distinguished guests, senior functionaries, and most important, my young friends. It's a cliche, not last but not last but not least, but then I cannot afford to ignore 
presence of Dr. Sudesh Dhankar. I am delighted to undertake my maiden visit to extraordinary region since assumption of the office of Vice President in this unique manner, a moment I would ever remember all my life. <laughs> the meandering Chandra Bhaga River, the majestic Siwalik Range, that graces the horizon and the sacred abode of Ma Vaishnu Devi overlooking this city create an enchanting atmosphere that is truly extraordinary and evocative. But let me say, coming here and getting this feast of intellect, I can tell you, will keep me going in physical form for the longest time. It is an honor and privilege to be associated with this special convocation of renowned university, Jammu University, that has diligently fostered excellence for over half a century. Guided by the profound motto of Samsoma Jyotirmage, lead me from darkness to light. It serves, I have no doubt about it, a poignant reminder to strive to become not only outstanding professionals, but also beacons of compassion and kindness for all humanity. And the mantra that has been imparted today by the Honorable Lieutenant Governor is eye-opener, path-breaking, thought-provoking. We do not know what will happen next. I recall my days as a member of parliament when I was elected in 1989 as a member of the legislature in the early 90s. No marriage was complete without there being a VCR or VCD. Where has it gone? Vanished. By the end of 90s, we celebrated telephone booths. They are creating wonders. Where have they gone? Honorable Lieutenant Governor was right. I am product of the profession at a time when there was no internet, no mobile, no computer. We had to depend on typewriter. And if a word goes wrong, there had to be white, white man. And look, where have we come now? As a professional, I used to take pride that I had a library which had all the volumes from the beginning. It has vanished. And therefore, he has rightly hinted at warriors of 2047 that be prepared, think out of the box, anything may happen. Your creativity, your innovation, your directional application will find the way. Honorable Lieutenant Governor was reflecting on artificial intelligence. This great power in the hand of humanity is yet to reach its height. It is yet to blossom to the fullest extent. But then, there are voices all around. Control it. It has to be regulated. You never know what impact it may have on society. And therefore, his address, which I, which I take as a turning point in your lives, his address, will keep you wondering, thinking, so that you meander in the world outside with eyes open, mind functional, and be ever prepared for the big change. Friends, this university has come a long way. 
from the improvised compass on the canal road on the other side of the V River to its present lush green surroundings. I also congratulate the Chancellor, the Lieutenant Governor, the Vice Chancellor, and the NSC for bringing about big changes. I find here exemplification of the most authentic execution of national education policy. It's a ground reality. The learned vice chancellor has reflected on various steps that have been taken. He couldn't be exhaustive for constant of time. I would not re make reflection on all that. But I will point out some that have greatly touched me and need to be national model. I greatly appreciate the unvisioned thoughtful focus by the University of Jammu on local language and national language and culture. Its initiative to promote Dogri is far-sighted and emulative for others. <laughs> Friends, we are a rich country because of our cultural languages. We have to nurture our languages. We have not only to preserve them, we have to make them very functional. And I am therefore so happy and delighted that this step of preservation and propagation of our local languages and culture emanating from this university will set the tone for others. Another important thing that has touched me, Indian Constitution is a document that drives us. Indian Constitution is a document that controls us. Indian Constitution is a document that takes care of the judiciary, the legislature, and the executive. This document from several languages. And I therefore congratulate the university for its effort to translate the Constitution of India into Dogri. <laughs> Organization of a 10-day multi-arts festival, Dugar Darpan, is well-meaning and befitting initiative. As Governor of the State of West Bengal, I had the occasion to be Chairman of Eastern Zone Cultural Center, covering nine states. I know the importance of it. It brings about connect of arts. It results in exploitation of genuine talent. I wish these programs a great success. Let me reiterate what the Vice Chancellor said. The Honorable Prime Minister is a visionary. He believes in execution. His thought and call for land to lab and lab to land. I'm so glad the university has realized it. Others will follow. Even as Chairman Rajya Sabha, I have been keenly concerned of generating a connect amongst our people. Our country is vibrant. It has unity and diversity because of the richness of its people, culture, languages, region. And therefore, your program, College on Wheels, I'm sure, will do wonders. The results will be geometric. It will offer lifetime experience and exposure to the students. Kate hain hai, Bhagwan puche aap se, aap ki marzi kya hai? This university has done the right thing. Design your degree. It's your life, your life journey. And you are unable to give direction to it. This is thinking out of the box. It will catch up like wildfire in a positive sense with no destruction, but only construction and reconstruction.
it is path breaking it is bound to be very impactful several mous the university has entered but one i must make a mention and the vice chancellor had indicated to that and that is with high altitude warfare school of army at gulmarg in the discipline of disaster management our country is perhaps the only country in the world that has excelled in the art of disaster management you would have seen frequently on the east and west coast we have cyclones but there is hardly any mortality on the seas hardly our technological support of the meteorological department you know envy of the world and this mou will create human resource that will take us a long way i am therefore little inspired and motivated to announce with the permission of the chancellor the lieutenant governor of state of jammu and union territory of jammu and kashmir indian council of world affairs will fructify an mou with the university of jammu <laughs> by end of july the director of indian council of world affairs a very senior foreign service official madam thakur is enthused when i put the idea to her and this will give the university another exposure in culture education and foreign affairs at a global level i wouldn't dwell much on importance of convocation because the honorable lieutenant governor has focused on it but this is a magical and significant moment in your lives you will ever remember it some of you will become alumni but you have to gender connect i congratulate the awardees their families and friends you will now venture into the larger world you have to leave your imprint and take a sankalp you will return to the society what you can you will return to your teachers and you will continue continually contributing for the growth trajectory of your alma mater this will help you realize your dreams and fulfill your aspirations friends from the times we lived from the times manoj sinha ji lived things have now changed fortunately for you there is emergence of an ecosystem that now allows you to fully exploit your talent and potential and unleash your energy this has been done by series of governmental steps and a will be opportunity i would make an appeal to you never be under tension or stress don't allow your mind to be a parking place of a thought never hesitate to execute an idea only for fear of failing trust me fear of failing is a fear only in your mind and not with others if an effort does not succeed in the first instance it is not a failure it is an attempt no historical milestone has been achieved in the first attempt keep on trying and i am sure your future will be filled with boundless growth and enduring achievements whatever we may say today future of india is in your hands now you are the most significant stakeholders you are very significant creators 
you do not need these days to belong to a family or a lineage or be a part of succession mechanism to be impactful in contribution. And that is why you would have seen when it comes to startups, unicorns, you outclassed both China and US because of your talent, your commitment. Keep it going. In this part of the country, and I pay a tribute to the Lieutenant Governor for his tireless efforts, successful efforts, not in the field of education alone, but in other areas. Now we have prevalence of harmonious atmosphere that was never there. This is the greatest homage to the great visionary, one of the youngest vice chancellors, Dr. Shama Prasad Mukherjee, who laid down his life for building a strong United India. Tomorrow, June 23rd, is the day of martyrdom of Shama Prasad. He had died as a detainee in a Srinagar jail on this day, June 23, 1953. A momentous tragedy. He died within days of being arrested at Lakhanpur. Why? He challenged that when India is a country, why in my country I would suffer restriction? He ventured in the true spirit of constitutionalism and was detained. It is gratifying for us, though belatedly, we have realized his dream. And now Indians can travel freely in their own country and this part. What a tribute to the functioning of the Lieutenant Governor that the entire world was looking at. His achievements, when G20 leaders came here, they released every second. The world vicariously enjoyed it, a moment of pride for all of us. <laughs> Abrogation of Article 35, Capital and 370. Personally, for 20 years, I had been advocating it. It was an aberration. Friends, go to the constitutional text. This article was put as a temporary article. It lasted 70 years. We are happy. It is not there. And the slogan which Dr. Shama Prasad Mukherjee gave Ek desh mein do vidhan, do pradhan, do nisan Nahi chalenge Aaj nahi chal rahe The path of remarkable growth and development trajectory that Jammu and Kashmir has started following abrogation of articles 370 and 35 capital of the constitution in August 2019 is a testament to the vision and foresight of Dr. Shama Prasad Mukherjee, who gave his life for it. The region's integration into the national mainstream has paved the way for investment, development, improved governance. I have no doubt Jammu will be hub of education. And look at the changes that have taken place. All top professional institutions in the country are already here, including Indian Institute of Technology, Indian Institute of Management, and it is a matter of months before we have all Indian Institute of Medical Sciences fully functional in Samba district. Friends, let me tell you the impact, and I'll be brief. An impact is the abrogation of Article 370 and 35 Capital A. And let me tell this August audience, Dr. Ambedkar, architect of Indian Constitution, 
drafted all the articles. He declined to draft article 370. He declined. We are happy without this article. 890 central laws have been applied. This part was not getting benefit. They're getting it. Over 200 state laws repealed. Over 100 state laws have been modified to be in consonance with the Constitution. And look at the ground reality. Connectivity through road, rail and air has shown incremental growth. Banihal Tunnel and Chenani Nasri Tunnel have been completed and open to traffic. The region takes pride in having the world's highest 1,315 meter long railway bridge over Chenab River that has been completed. I would not reflect on more, but I would indicate that while we take pride on what is happening in our country, and what is happening in our country is amazing. We never dreamed of it. We were 11th economy just a decade ago. In September 2022, Bharat, our country, got the distinction of being the fifth largest global economy. And in the process, we marked ahead of our colonial rulers, the UK. I keep on telling people, you go by facts, facts never lie. Digital transfer in this country in 2022 was 1.3 trillion, trillion, I repeat trillion US dollars. This could not have happened unless the recipient was technologically receptive, had access to banking system. So you won't. But the achievement has another milestone. And the milestone was there were digital transfers all over the world. Our achievement means take digital transfers of UK, USA, France and Germany multiply by four and we are still ahead of them. Did we France and Germany multiply by four and we are still ahead of them? Did we ever dream of this? Our 700 million internet users in 2022 per data consumption is more than that of US and China taken together. These are the achievements. When we have these achievements, and when mother of democracy, in old age democracy, is on the rise, the rise is unstoppable. I beseech you, I urge you, I call upon you to be proud Indians and take pride in our historical achievements. When all is going well and the world is envying us, respecting Bharat as never before, these are not the days when we have to make our voice clear in the world. The world awaits what the leader of the larger democracy will so say on a particular point. In that situation, it's a cause of concern. It's a cause of worry that some of us, a small category, try to taint, tarnish, demean, decry our institutions. How can we countenance it? We cannot allow our historic achievements. Imagine, they talk about food security, ignoring the fact that from 1st April 2020, this country has been feeding more than 800 million people, and it continues now. 
No country in the world can ever think of that. We therefore cannot allow anyone to tweak or impede our upward growth trajectory. Because no country in the world can take pride as we can. We have constitutionally functional democracy at village level, panchayat level, panchayat smithy level, jila pressure level, state level, and central level. Constitutionally protected. This incredible political ecosystem is because of our human genius. We Indians have a strong DNA. We learn skills fastest in the world. And that is why you'll find in every part of the world you'll find an Indian genius spearheading corporates and institutions, making India proud and those countries respecting our talent. It is ironical and travesty of a sort that false narratives are set, up, set afloat in orchestrated manner by forces that are inimical to this country. Tragedy is that some of us do not take it seriously. Their number is small. I was enthused by the reflection which the Lieutenant Governor made about Time Magazine. Friends, I will reflect to another episode focused by Time Magazine. And Time Magazine had the occasion to reflect, I think, three decades ago. Again, a front page story that if the silent majority decides to remain silent, it may be silenced forever. I appeal to all of you, use your mind, activate your nationalism, and do not take lightly these pernicious designs communicated in a sinister manner to run down our growth story. We cannot allow it to be impeded. One thing I can tell you, and the change is appearing in the last few years only, no one is above the law. The long arm of law will reach you. Some people in the country are taking it for themselves that we are above law. They take to streets when there is a demand of law. If X has been summoned by, an, by a regulator or agency, how can you take to streets? It's a country that has access to judiciary. I am so happy to share with you, and you know it. The stakeholders in corruption will get all their forces together to get an escape route. The good thing is, all their escape routes are now being plugged. There is zero tolerance for corruption. The message is now loud and clear. You may be any one of any identity or any lineage, you are accountable to law. The mechanism is now transparent, accountable, impactful and effective. Friends, join me in congratulating the Lieutenant Governor for giving a great mileage to us at a global level. for making G20 Tourism Working Group meeting in Srinagar a resounding success, <laughs> remarkable success. And it was carried by the international media at all levels. And to my young friends, never stop dreaming. Every dream will fructify with your thoughtful process and never hesitate to take the next step. Friends, 
In the end, I express my deep grat gratitude to the Lieutenant Governor that while my respect for him had been enormous and immense earlier, his discourse today needs wider dissemination. I have not reflected on that area, but he has been rationally futuristic. His rationale of calling upon the youth to be ever prepared. And I'm sure you all will bear that in mind. I wish you all a great success. May your path be adorned with success, growth, and remarkable achievements. Jai Hind.